What's up guys? It's me, Sir Ernest, and today we're going to discuss example 7.14 of Griffith's 4th edition. The example reads, Imagine two concentric methyl spherical shells as shown in the figure. The inner one has radius A, carries charge Q, which is a function of time. And the outer one reaches B, an opposite charge Q, negative Q as a function of time. The space between them is filled with ohmic material of conductivity sigma. Now here we're going to show that the magnetic field is zero within the, uh, within the material. Now, as we notice here that electric field should be produced because of the presence of opposite charges in the, in the shells. Where in, in the inner shell, you have positive Q. And in the outer shell, you have negative Q. So naturally, there will be an electric field directed outward. So this is your rigidly uh, pointed electric field. So as a result, you will have you will produce a current density or a current J. Now you may have noticed that uh, there is a current. Remember that when current is produced, therefore magnetic field should be produced. Okay, where the current is happening. But in this case, we're going to prove that the magnetic field in this region, even if there is a current, J, the magnetic field would still be zero. So one of the hints there is that because of the fact that the configuration is uh, spherically symmetrical, okay? Uh, so that means the, 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 mag the magnetic field, okay, produced by this J will not, uh, will, will not be produced. Okay, and we're going to prove that today. Now, let's start with the computation of the electric field. By Gauss law, if we're going to set this as our Gaussian surface. Okay, and this is, let's say, our, this will be your R. The electric field, which you already know already, the, will be equal to uh, Q over... Uh, 4 pi epsilon naught r squared r hat. It's easy to do that. Very easy. So from here, we can calculate the current density, which is sigma e. So in this case, this will be sigma over 4 pi epsilon naught times q over r squared r hat. So here, the current density j is radially outward. And because of this configuration, there is no way that a magnetic field will be produced. Now, from here, we can calculate the current I associated with this current density J, which is equal to J dot dA. And then you take the integral of that area integral. Okay, so following this expression, we now have the integral of sigma over 4 pi epsilon naught times q over r squared dot dA. Okay, because q, sigma, uh, epsilon, and r are all uh, functions of, are, are symmet uh, sorry, the, because j is symmetrical, uh, is pointing to the, to the same direction as dA because of your symmetry. This becomes a uh, simple multiplication and the all these values or all these parameters is independent of the area so this will now be reduced to a simple expression like sigma q over epsilon times 1 over 4 pi r squared times 4 pi r squared where 4 pi r squared will be the area of the spherical shell with radius r so this is sigma q over 4 pi r squared you take everything out and then you just left with the integral of dA which is 4 pi r squared which is 0 
So therefore, the current will now be sigma q over epsilon. Okay? Because the current flows outward, so that means the charges here will decrease. Okay? So this charge in the inner shell will decrease over time. So this current will now be equal to the decrease in the current as a function of time. So what does this mean? This means that Okay, this means that the current will now be equal to uh, sigma q over epsilon naught. Okay, okay, now how about uh, the current displacement? So, current displacement jd, as I mentioned earlier, will be epsilon naught times. Uh, derivative of the electric field divided by uh, the derivative of the electric field respect to time. Okay, so again, using this equation, we now have uh, epsilon naught times derivative respect to time of a Q over 4 pi epsilon naught r squared r hat which is equal to 1 over 4 pi r squared epsilon will cancel and then derivative of q with respect to time r hat and what is this? This is now equal to negative sigma q over epsilon. So this is now equal to negative sigma times 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times q over r squared r hat. Okay. Okay. Now Ampere's law states that the curl of the magnetic field will be equal to mu naught times j plus epsilon naught times derivative of e with respect to time which is your jd okay okay so what does this mean this means that this will now be equal to zero because remember where j is equal to this. So this is, okay, so let me show that to you. So this is mu naught times sigma q over 4 pi epsilon r squared plus negative because this is jd. So this is negative. Uh, epsilon naught sorry this should be oh no this should be negative sigma yeah this should be negative sigma times 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q over r squared which is the same so this and this will cancel so this is equal to 0 now because the curl of the magnetic field is 0 and we already know that magnetic field is divergentless so therefore magnetic field is zero okay okay so that's it that's a simple derivation or proof that if you have this configuration if your current density is radially uh, outward 
there is no there's no up there's no possible way uh, that the magnetic field will be produced therefore the magnetic field is zero okay that's it thank you very much i hope you learned something today thank you for watching and i'll see you guys next time bye bye